I was uh, retained as a director to direct a film called The Car. Uh, and uh, assigned to it was a producer. And we began work on it. The company wanted certain changes in the script, which we did, we made. And then the producer was taken off to produce television shows. So I was left with an associate, I think his name is Marvin Burt, and he and I continued to do the best we could. Now, the theory was this. The company had just uh, finished a very successful uh, movie, The Jaws, and uh, they had an idea that they wanted Jaws on land. Now, I had some doubts about this because uh, I explained my theory of the approach as this, that the shark lived in its own dark, mysterious world without sunlight and uh, outside our land, outside our environment. Whereas the request of the company to shoot this in a desert provided me with additional problem, that this was a car in our environment in bright sunlight without mystery. <clears throat> so how could I make a version of this tale mysterious and uh, full of mood? It was difficult. If you see the movie, you'll see I had to use a number of tricks, mostly suspense. Who is this? Who is behind the wheel? Uh, what is going on? Uh, and. Uh, uh, where is the mystery? Well, the I don't know who was behind the wheel to this day. Uh, it was the car with its own evil spirit. So if you see the introduction of this, it came from the horizon in a cloud of dust and then killed a young uh, musician and went on from there to create a certain amount of chaos. Now, chaos was apparently going to be the name of the game without rhyme or reason, but without mystery, without mood, without darkness. I tried very hard to point out to the company that the devil was in the darkness in the mysterious corners of a, of a city, whereas what we had here, what we were facing, was God who was in the desert, in the bright sunshine, in the countryside with a small town. So I had a series of, of contradictions to deal with, but that was my assignment, and I said, okay, I'll give it a whirl. So that's why you see certain adjustments made in terms of the questions, mystery, who is it, uh, where did it come from, what is its goal, and what will destroy it? Now, the only answer that I had at the very end of the movie was to try to do a spectacular crash and have fire come up from the car into uh, the form of a claw. Now, at the time, the special effects department was really overwhelmed with other projects, so they couldn't really make the fire at the destruction of the car into this kind of claw. They did the best they could, and you can see the remains of that effort uh, to uh, make this final, final evil statement. Now, everybody tried very hard to create a sense of destruction and uh, mystery, but we were facing that essential problem of God is in the desert, the devil is in the dark. I am having a drink with the boys. I don't want you hanging on my coattails from morning to night. How many times do I have to tell you? sequence that uh, approached what I thought we might have had, or might have made really, was the one in which the car approaches through a big bay window in a house, and you see the headlights way off in the distance coming closer and closer and closer. That worked out pretty well the way I liked, uh, wanted it to, uh, but that's about the closest. That might be a, an example of what I would like to have done if there had been darkness surrounding everything. I'm scared. No, I promise you I won't go out. Tell me what to do, baby. I, 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 I.
of the car itself mechanically uh, had one problem. Uh, at the racetrack, when I wanted it to leap off the side uh, of the racetrack and drop onto four wheels, it was always top heavy. Uh, we could never get it to fly, uh, but we did the best we could with it. You'll see that problem probably. There was uh, an incidence where I think the car had a life of its own. We were trying to work out something which was a nightmare, that as I wanted the car to come along and then spin and roll, something which would be very easy today with digital uh, technology, it was very difficult then. And what the technicians did was to arrange an explosion under the car, which would make it roll over so, and uh, then had to be timed with two sheriff's cars coming this way, so the, the roll theoretically would do that. Very difficult thing to attempt, and I probably should not have expected that to work out, but we all tried. Uh, experiments always go sometimes wrong, sometimes well. The first time we did the best we could. But as I was watching the preparation of this, uh, the car was ready to be exploded. I was standing about, stupidly I must say, about a, a foot away from the track in which the two sheriff's cars were to come. And lo and behold, it was a short circuit and the car exploded and rolled and went past me, I think, close enough so that I could feel the breeze. But uh, I survived uh, and we went back and tried it again. Now you'll notice when that car rolls over the sheriff's car, you'll see pieces of it come off. It was my hope that that would not happen. I suppose it was an unrealistic hope. I was thinking ahead 20 years to the digital world when the, the roll would be complete and neat and clean. But uh, I guess there's some credit due to experimentation. Uh, and so uh, that's what the result was. Come on, stay in close. He'll have to stop. He can't take us both. He'll turn off and we got him. I do hear occasionally from people that uh, liked it or thought it was spooky, uh, and I'm happy. I wish I could have made it more spooky than it was. Uh, one of the other interesting things that we tried to do was there's a scene in the cemetery uh, where we wanted the car to behave like a, a mad dog and spin. Very tough to do. But we had a number of things there that would have been very easy to do in a digital age, but. Uh, Back then it was, uh, well, we haven't done this before, let's try it. So we tried it. It'll be up to others to determine how far we succeeded, if at all, uh, and uh, what the, what the result, how the results could be evaluated. Race ipse loquitur, which means the thing speaks for itself.